Hey guys, Krista here from Davy and Krista, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how Show It and WordPress work together to create beautiful sites. So if you're new to Show It, Show It is a 100% drag and drop editor. It makes beautiful websites that are also powerful because they have the full power of WordPress behind them. It's why I build so many sites on Show It and why I love them so much. It lets you skip all the code. You don't have to worry about theme updates. And while you might still have some plugins up to update, it's not nearly as extensive as a like standalone WordPress site with something like Elementor. And you don't have to worry about your whole site breaking when you update those plugins. So major win. WordPress is the most popular website builder out there and blogging platform out there. And to date, it powers about a third of the internet. So there are a lot of different resources out there for WordPress websites, and it really lets you do just about anything that you want on your website through plugins and like third-party software. So that means that you get the beauty and the control of Show It and the full power of WordPress. But figuring out how Show It works with WordPress can take a minute to understand because it's a little bit different than a straight WordPress site. So if you've used something like Divi or Elementor or like older builders like Profoto of the past, it's a little different and I'm gonna teach you exactly how to customize your Show It website and work with the blog in this video. First, you're gonna pick a Show It website template or you can build your own, although I don't really recommend going that route unless you really know what you're doing. The Show It library is filled with beautiful designs from designers like us that you can just use for free in your website template. So that's an easy and inexpensive way to get started. Or you can look for a premium design, also from designers like us, and use that on your website. It's really easy to install. All you're gonna do is grab your file from the designer and add this really short little code to your short website. It goes into your account with all of the fonts and files and all of the things you need and there's no worrying about like uploading plugins or making sure all the templates work. It's all there, so amazing. Once your design is installed in your account, you're gonna see a few different sections. So the first sections we're gonna see are our pages and your pages are probably gonna look different depending on which template that you're using. I'm using one of our templates and this is our Marsai template and I'll link it down below if you fall in love with this one while I'm teaching you. Anyway, these pages are good for things like the home page, the about page, the contact page, gallery pages, anything that doesn't have to be a WordPress page and have that functionality. If you were gonna do a home page that pulls in posts automatically, we'd wanna move that down to the blog templates, but that's a little bit more of a detailed tutorial. And so I'll also link that down below how to get that set up. Um, so these are all of your pages. We have credit pages, 404 pages. You can have as many pages as you want here and you can duplicate them and rename them, etc. The thing that we're gonna focus on today are these blog templates. And these blog templates just exist to tell Show It and WordPress how to work together. So let me turn off mobile and show you for example. So in these blog templates, I'm gonna scroll down to show you where my posts are styled. These are not gonna pull in your actual blog posts yet. Really, these elements just exist on this page to tell WordPress to set the featured image for a blog post over to the left and at this specific size. It tells WordPress that this should be the category, or at least in my designs, I like to make it the top category. So if we come over here, we can see post top category. It tells WordPress how to style the title that's gonna come into your blog post, where to show the excerpt, so that the next post should be formatted slightly differently, um, and so forth. So one big mistake that I see people make in this section is trying to add their blog posts in here and then trying to take this single post page and add in their blog content and then duplicate it again and again for each post. That's the hard way. You don't want to do that. And that's not actually how a blog works. So again, these pages set the styles and they talk to WordPress. And then I'll show you how to add the blog posts to WordPress in a minute. Once you have your template formatted exactly the way you want it, you have your font set, you have all of your styles and your layout set, the next thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we have content. So if you have an existing WordPress or Squarespace site, sit tight again, because um, I'm gonna talk through that process of migrating your content in a minute. If you are brand new to blogging, you have no blog posts, what I recommend normally is to write your blog post content in something like Google Docs so that you have all of that content ready for when we make your site live in a little bit. You can gather your images, but I wouldn't actually put them in the blog posts because you can't extract those images easily from Google Docs. I would size those images for the web and I have a different tutorial that I will link below because um, there's a whole process about best practices for sizing your images, especially for a blog, to ensure that they load quickly. 
um, and then gather your images in different folders on your desktop. So you have your text in your Google Docs and your images in your folders. And once your blog is live, we're gonna load those. I would aim to have like three to five blog posts ready to go at the time of launch so that it makes your blog page look full. You don't want people to go there and see no blog posts there. It's gonna look a little broken. And you want to have enough content there that introduces them to you and your offerings, and it gives them a reason to stay on the page and keep browsing. And it also gives them a taste for what kind of content you'll be creating in the future and hopefully gets them to join your mailing list and keep coming back for more. And if you're stressing about how to write content quickly and effectively and make it search engine friendly, I'm also gonna link to a tutorial down below. Davey teaches a class on how to use AI to quickly generate search engine content friendly outlines with ChatGPT, And so he teaches you how to do the keyword research and then how to put together an outline. The whole process only takes a few minutes and it'll give you a really strong base for the content that you're creating and streamline your content. So again, I'll link that below. We're not gonna be able to load these posts in WordPress quite yet, but we're gonna get to that in this next step. If you already have a WordPress site elsewhere or you're coming from something like Squarespace, show it will actually migrate that content for you free of charge. So you'll wanna make sure that you have their advanced plan, but it's worth it. Um, I always recommend to our clients to go with the advanced plan because it gives you the most power. It includes that migration um, and it really lets you customize some of the SEO stuff on your blog. If you're coming from an editor like Wix or Weebly, or I've seen some other random blog post editors out there, they won't do that migration because it's not easy for those two systems to talk to each other. WordPress can easily talk to another WordPress site and those codes can go over there. Squarespace has a pretty easy um, integration to let it go over to a, a WordPress site, but a lot of those platforms like Wix, they've built their own blogging software and it doesn't let you leave that software very easily. Um, we have worked with third-party paid services and before to help move that content for our clients, but it can be kind of finicky. It doesn't always work. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I never recommend people go with something like Wix or Weebly. I think that WordPress is going to give you the most flexibility in the long run for your website. If you do a quick Google search and put in your current website platform with WordPress, you might be able to find some paid third-party software out there. We've also had some of our clients hire people from Fiverr before, but that can kind of be hit or miss. And if you're gonna go that route, you really wanna make sure that you've spelled out exactly what you need, how many images you have, and you wanna make sure that they're also gonna move all of the images from your existing site to WordPress. You don't want them to just move the content, so like the texts and then the links to the images, because if they don't move those images, once your site moves over to the new site, the image is gonna be broken. And so it's kind of like worthless. Um, so if you go that route, just be careful, do a lot of research. When your site is as done as it can be without actually making it live, you're gonna put in a migration request to show it and ask them to help you begin the launch process. They'll guide you through the whole process of pointing your domain and your DNS records over to their hosting um, and away from their existing hosting. And they're really great in that. They're just so encouraging and supportive. And then if you're migrating from another WordPress or Squarespace site, they're also gonna migrate that content at that time. And then they'll set up your new WordPress account. So you'll get a brand new WordPress login. It might even be the same if you're coming from an existing WordPress site um, and all of your content will be there. Or if your blog is new, you'll get that login to your new WordPress site and it's gonna be connected with your Show It site. Once you get that notice from Show It letting you know that your WordPress site is ready, you can get access it by going to your URL.com and adding a WP admin to the end. Your login is very likely gonna be the same as your existing Show It account, or like I said, if you're coming from another WordPress account, it might be that. And if you don't know what your login is, you can always reset it using your email. So if you're brand new to blogging, I'm also gonna link a few videos down below that I've recorded about creating blog posts on the Gutenberg editor, which is Show It's newer, which is WordPress's newer editor, as well as using the traditional classic editor. Um, again, those are linked below, but I'll just give you a quick overview right here too. So the way that you can toggle between those two different editors um, is in the plugins area. So, so if I come over to my plugins area of WordPress, you're gonna see several different plugins here that probably are pre-installed. You might see the classic editor. If you don't have that there, you can always add a new plugin and search for it, and it's easy to find. You'll make sure that you wanna make sure that it says it's by WordPress contributors. So I'm gonna hit activate. And then once that is activated, I can go over to my post area 
and we can add a new post and we can just start filling out these fields. So we'll give it a title, um, nine tips for perfect headshots. I can add all of my content in here. We're just gonna pretend that's a lot of content. I can start adding in images. So again, I'll link to my video below about how to size images and like pair verticals together. I can just grab a few images that I have from in my gallery already. Um, and I'm selecting them by hitting command and I can add alt text if I want to and the title. Um, for now though, I'm just gonna make sure, well, let's change this, make sure that they go in at full size and not the tiny size. And then I'm going to insert them into my blog post. It might just take a second. I think I have to click on each of these individually to make it larger. Normally, once you do that once in your WordPress account, you don't have to change the sizing again. Um, but I just want mine to be not tiny because they'll be a little pixelated. So I can hit update. And then if I click on preview over here, I can come down and I can see that they're all sized and they're contained within my Show It account. I can also give my site, well, we'll walk through this. So you can change whether it's published or set as a draft. You can change whether it's private or password protected. I probably wouldn't use those. Um, whether it is scheduled at a certain time. So I could say, I want this to go live on June 20th at 4 a.m. and hit okay. Um, I have this extra Yoast plugin on here that lets me do a little bit of SEO stuff. And if any of the sections I'm talking about you can't actually see, you can always come up to screen options right here and make sure that you can see like your excerpt, um, if you wanted to have any like custom fields or any of those things, probably don't need custom fields. Um, so I can give my post a category. I would never give it more than two categories. You wanna keep those minimal. You can use tags if you need to tag a specific topic. I would do a little bit of research though about best practices for tags because I made the mistake when I was first getting started blogging with adding like a hundred tags for every blog post with things like tree, because there's a tree in my images. That's not the way you wanna do it. Um, I can set a featured image for my blog post, which is what shows up, let's see, on the blog page right, right here. Um, and I could just select that from my gallery if I wanted to do that coffee image and then it'll show up right there. And then I can also come down here and this one by default has Yoast SEO on here. My preferred one right now is Rank Math. I think it's a little bit more powerful and I like things like the headline anal analyzation tool. Um, it helps you create better headlines that can come up better in search engines, but Yoast is great too. But Yoast also works and I'll link to a video down below where Davey talks about a comparison between the different SEO plugins for WordPress. So I could customize all of that if I wanted to. I could change my excerpt, which is what is gonna show up. Let's see. This is the excerpt. So by default, it's always gonna pull in the first few sentences of your blog post. But if you didn't want it to pull in those, you wanted it to be a different bit of text, which I do sometimes depending on what my blog post is, you can put that down here. So once I've done all of those things, I could either schedule it or I could hit publish. So let's make this uh, not scheduled. We'll cancel that so I can publish immediately and I just hit publish and then my blog post is live. And if I find out that I need to change something, I can always go back and edit things going forward. So it's not set in stone. So that is how you blog a blog post with the classic editor, which is the older editor. If you wanted to use their new editor, we can come back here. And I think that by default, when you have a show it WordPress account set up, this is gonna be off and you'll have this newer editor. But I can deactivate this classic editor and I can come back to all posts and I'll click create a new post. And then it looks a little bit different. So this is where my title goes, nine tips for perfect headshots. And then in here, I can start adding my text. And then the big difference between the other editor and this one is that we have these things called blocks and you use the blocks and they create kind of like a stacking, you can stack your posts and have all different formats in here. So I can click on this plus sign, I could add another paragraph, I could add an image, I could add a heading. I could add a, gal a gallery, I don't really use that often, a list, and then there's actually a lot more in here that we can use if we need to. So pull quotes and tables and code. Um, so like if you're embedding a video, there actually I think there's a video one where you can put in your video link from Vimeo or YouTube. Um, 
like buttons and lines to separate things and space, um, a lot of stuff. So I really only use the paragraphs, the headings, like the lists and the photos, um, but there's a lot more that you could add. So if I wanted to add a photo, I could come up to image and then click on upload. So if I wanted to upload an image, I could come to my folder. These are our beautiful headshots from our friends, Erica and John, and then upload a photo. And then you would just kind of go through and start building your post that way. This looks a little bit pixelated to me. So I think I probably need to set it to be full, yeah, full size. And then it, it just cleared up. Um, so if you notice that you've added an image and it doesn't look clear, that's something that you can do. The rest of the settings on here, if I flip over to post, are gonna be the same as the previous version. So I can change the visibility between public, private, or password protected. I can schedule this in here. In this area, you can edit your URL of your post if you wanna take out any stop words or shorten it a bit. And then we can also set categories ugh, and tags and featured images and excerpt, and you can change whether comments are allowed or such. And then if I scroll down on here, I can see my SEO plugin and depending on which plugin you use, it's gonna look a little bit different down here. And then if you have any other plugins added that modify posts, those would also be down there. All right guys, if you have any questions about connecting Show It and WordPress and how they work, drop them in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure that you hit like and subscribe to get more updates about future videos that we release. Thank you.